Today we've been blessed with brand new DLC info for BF1 and there's a lot to take in. But first, let me just reassure you, this isn't fake news 2.0, this is all real, honestly, I promise. Let's get stuck in. First things first, we now know the names of all four of the new DLC maps in the first DLC called They Shall Not Pass. Remembering of course that this is a French DLC, they are Verdun Heights, Fort Vaux, Soissons and Rupture. We had an idea of the map's style and direction when we were given some concept art fairly recently but now we have actual images of the maps to dissect. Visually based off the initial screenshots I have to say they look pretty fantastic. Verdun Heights takes place in the opening barrage of the Battle of Verdun and you're fighting upwards towards the Verdun fortresses. A backdrop of burning forests may Make this look visually very unique but I have a feeling it could be Fort Vaux that will grab people's attention. Why you say? Well it's got all of the hallmarks of an Operation Metro slash Operation Lockers kind of a map. Set inside a fort there's a maze of corridors and hallways and while we don't know if the entire map takes place indoors what we do know is that you're going to have to prepare yourself for lots and lots of grenades and automatico fire and gas. Of course flamethrowers on top as well. And then the next map is called Soissons, I probably completely pronounced that incorrectly but that sounds kind of French to me. Remember when we were given the concept art and info DICE talked about massive tank battles? Well this, it looks like, is where it's going to take place. It has a similar style to St Quentin Scar on first impressions or perhaps Giant Shadow but this map is designed with vehicles very much at the forefront. Large tank battles combined with plane warfare overhead and infantry battles within the town. It's a shame to ruin the landscape as this French countryside is particularly beautiful at this time of the year. It is set in summer after all. What's interesting though is that we are told only the thunderstorm is louder than the war so perhaps this summer's day doesn't stay sunny for long and we could see a massive Levolution style weather storm come into effect. Lastly we have Rupture. The French forces need to capture key bridges across the river Ain, but it's the poppy fields that really set this map apart. Growing over the wrecks of previous tank battles it's hard not to be drawn to the sea of red. I imagine that we'll be utilising the wrecks of old tanks as cover which would be pretty neat. Now we knew from the teaser the other day that there was a new tank making its way into the game with this DLC called the Char 2 Super Heavy Tank. I talked about it a few days ago in the French DLC video and whilst it's a big tank I wasn't convinced that it was big enough to be a behemoth but lo and behold now we know that's exactly what it is. We have our first behemoth that can move around freely across the land. We don't know just yet if it's perhaps been scaled up a little bit but it didn't look like it from the teaser or how many people is this going to accommodate. In real life it took 12 crew to operate but you can be fairly confident that in the game I think it's going to be around 6 to 8 people. I thought that maybe the German K wagon would be added in as well and we could see two different behemoth types depending on the team and also I had high hopes for epic tank battles between the K wagon and the Char 2C but that won't happen unfortunately. We do however have a new normal tank, the French Saint Chamond assault tank. This thing looks fairly similar in shape to the heavy tank that's already in the game but the main thing you'll notice is the insane weapon at the front. It weighed 23 tonnes and had a crew of 8 people. A 75mm front cannon combined with 4 Hodgkiss machine guns was its main weaponry. It was actually the second French tank of the First World War. The Renault FT is already in the game of course and 400 were manufactured between April 1917 and July 1918. By present day definitions it wouldn't actually be classified as a tank but it's generally been accepted as such. In reality it wasn't that great apparently, it may have weighed 23 tonnes but it only had around 90 brake horsepower, that's around 4 brake horsepower per tonne and when you also consider how long it was, almost 8 metres, it never really lived up to its full potential. It was essentially an armoured box with a load of guns in it like many of the early tank designs of the first world war. What it did have though was an enhanced version of the famous model 1897 Canon de 75 which was a field cannon fitted at the front of the tank. It was the world's first field gun fitted with a hydro pneumatic recoil mechanism. Basically it had a field gun sticking out the front. A bit more technical than that of course but it had been designed to carry it but that's essentially what it was. It definitely fits the bill for something interesting and unique in the game for sure. Talking of weaponry, we're also going to see a new stationary weapon being added to the game. Similar to a field gun however, this is called the Siege Howitzer. 
and it will be operated by a single infantry player in the game, you aim it with indirect fire much like the mortars. The BL 9.2 inch howitzer was a heavy siege howitzer and formerly the primary barrage equipment of the British forces in France during the First World War. It actually fired 900 pounds which is around 130 kilogram shells. That's something that packs a real punch. As well as that, we talked about something else the other day in the French DLC video and we were right with that, we get a new Elite class. Based on the teaser we saw, I did mention that it was possible it was a tanker class and I kind of got a melee and grenadier vibe and you know, that's pretty much what we're getting here with this Elite class and his name is the Trench Raider. He comes equipped with a brutal club and wait for it, this is what the description says, an impressive grenade arsenal. Now when I mentioned the other day that it could be equipped with grenades, I was really hoping that it wasn't actually going to happen. Surely there are enough grenades in the game already. But it seems that he's in fact a melee character primarily who can throw a hefty amount of grenades around as well. I need to have a play with him really and get more details before we see how well it works, but I do worry that he could take a lot of damage trying to get close up using his trench. We'll see. Does the game need more grenade spam like this? I'd say probably not, but of course we won't see this elite class in the game that often, simply for the fact that it's an elite class pickup and once he's dead, it's going to be a while before it respawns. Finally, but certainly not least of all, a brand new game mode is coming to the first DLC called Frontlines. The description says it's an experience with a mix of conquest and rush as you fight for chain control of points in a tug of war frontline battle. Both teams fight for one flag at a time and when this objective is captured the action moves on to the next. And if you manage to capture the enemy's HQ control point, the game then turns into a rush style section where telegraph posts need to be attacked and defended. Now this may sound fairly familiar, and I think it is, it sounds a lot like Turning Point in Battlefront, and in fairness Turning Point was a great game mode in Battlefront and I felt it was a great addition. And this was also a tug of war style game mode that could work really well in a World War 1 setting, so I think that this could turn out to be quite a popular mode if the maps are good. It combines rush and conquest, although you could argue that Operations is already doing that to a certain extent. Overall though, a good news post and there's a lot of new stuff being added into this DLC and I'm pretty excited for it now. Four new maps which we expected, a new elite class although time will tell how functional he turns out to be, a new behemoth tank as well as another standard tank and that's not to mention the new game mode and perhaps new weaponry and gadgets that we'll be getting as well. Battlefield 1 really needs some new content right now to keep it fresh so I'm excited for this DLC and hopefully we don't have to wait too much longer to get a trailer to properly see the new maps and tanks in action. So there we go guys, that's it for this update video. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys lots and I'll see you in the next one.